Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The earless monitor lizard is a semi-aquatic brown animal native to Southeast Asian island of Borneo. It is the only living species in the family Lanthanotidae and it is related to the true monitor lizards. Paleontologists have suggested that this lineage diverged from true monitors of the family Varanidae during the late Cretaceous period, although the fossil record is completely silent on this matter. This means that lathanoids have a long ghost lineage extending back to the Mesozoic. Earless monitor lizards have a cylindrical body, long neck, short limbs, long sharp claws, small eyes, semi-transparent lower eyelids, and six longitudinal rows of strongly keeled scales. Despite the name, they are capable of hearing, although lack a tympanum and an ear opening, and other externally visible signs of ears. The upper parts of the body are orangish brown, and the underside is mottled dark brown and whitish. Adult earless monitor lizards typically have a total length of about 40 centimeters, or 16 inches. The tail is prehensile, and if it is lost, it is not regenerated. The skin is shed infrequently, possibly less than once a year. Overall, the sexes are alike, but the males have a distinctively broader head and broader tail base than the females. They sometimes oscillate their throat, similar to frogs, and the forked tongue is sometimes flicked in and out, similar to snakes. The only vocalisation they seem to be capable of is a gentle squeaking sound. The earless monitor lizard was described in 1878 by Austrian zoologist Franz Steindachner. The genus name Lathanotus means hidden ear, and the species name Borneensis refers to its home island of Borneo. The uniqueness of this species was recognised from the very beginning, and Steindachner placed it in its own family, Lanthanotidae. In 1899, George Albert Boulanger relegated it to the family Helodermatidae, together with the beaded lizards and Gila monster. Further studies were conducted in the 1950s, where it was found that although it is related to Helodermatidae, this relationship is relatively distant. The similarity is in part the result of convergent evolution, and they should be recognised as separate families. Both are part of the broader Anguimorpha, but the relationship among the various families within this group is a matter of debate. Several earlier studies have placed the earless monitor lizard together with Helodermatidae and Varanidae in Varanoidea. More recent genetic evidence has found that the nearest relative of the earless monitor lizard is indeed Varanidae. The extinct Cherminotus, known from late Cretaceous fossil remains in Mongolia, has been considered a close relative of the earless monitor lizard, but aside from this, no fossil relatives from the Cenozoic have ever been found. The earless monitor lizard is endemic to Southeast Asian island of Borneo. It is found in lowlands at altitudes below 300 metres, or 1000 feet, near streams and marshes. These are typically located in rainforests, but it is also found in streams flowing through degraded habitats such as agricultural land, mature fruit tree gardens and palm oil plantations, and is reported to occur in rice paddies. Its habitat is tropical, with air and water temperatures that are generally about 22 to 29 degrees, or 72 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit, and captives reportedly prefer 24 to 28 degrees. Earless monitor lizards are generally strictly nocturnal animals, although exceptional daytime observations in the open have been reported. The day is usually spent near water in burrows that can be up to 30 centimetres long, or under rocks, logs or other vegetation. They are generally quite inactive and not agile, but can make surprisingly fast bursts of speed when startled, and will rapidly catch prey items placed in front of them. During one study where 19 individuals were located during the night, about half were in the water and the other half were near water on land. In captivity they sometimes remained virtually immobile on the water for hours, periodically lifting the nose above the water surface to breathe. When underwater, the semi-transparent lower eyelids are generally closed, covering the eyes. It has been speculated that the prehensile tail is wrapped around stones, roots and other things underwater to avoid being swept along during floods. Although generally docile and inactive when handled, males are usually more aggressive than females when caught, 
and in one case a scientist received a deep bite to his finger, but did not experience any effects indicating venom in the bite. This supported decades-old discussion studies where no venom glands or grooves in the teeth were found. Others kept in captivity were found to bite often, resulting in wounds that are relatively deep compared to those from similar sized lizards and causing extensive bleeding, with blood clotting reputedly being slower than in normal wounds. Recent studies have found the presence of both venom glands and toxic compounds in the bite of this species. They typically feed on earthworms, crustaceans and fish. In captivity, they will eat fish, both whole and in pieces, earthworms, squid, shrimp, tadpoles, yolk from green sea turtle eggs, pieces of pig and chicken liver, baby mice and mussels. In captivity, adults typically eat once or twice a week, but sometimes enter long periods where they do not feed. Unusually for a lizard, they can swallow prey while submerged underwater. They appear to be able to do this by draining water from their nostrils, similar to turtles. Like their closest relatives, they are oviparous, although little is known about their reproduction. The earless monitor lizard has not been rated by the IUCM, but it likely qualifies for a vulnerable position. The species is usually considered very rare, but it is easily overlooked, and as recently as 1999, the only published confirmed records were from Sarawak. In some areas, locals are unaware of its presence or consider it rare, but in others, it may be common. At one site in western Kalimantan, 17 of 21 locals asked were aware of its presence, and most of these considered it common. At three other sites in the region, the majority asked were aware of its presence, but less than half considered it common. Elsewhere, a three-night survey of a 400 metre, 1,300 foot long section of a stream, as well as two adjacent streams, located 19 earless monitor lizards, representing an unusually high density for a lizard of this size. Despite this high density in a stream used by locals for washing, fishing and as a source of drinking water, they only reported seeing the species very rarely and some had never seen it. Nevertheless, at present, the earless monitor lizard is only known for certain from a relatively small number of sites. In recent years, this animal has become a target for the international pet trade, potentially endangering this species low population sites in the wild. Habitat loss represents another serious threat, as forests in Borneo rapidly are being replaced by palm oil plantations. However, the earless monitor can survive in high densities in areas surrounded by degraded habitats, including palm oil plantations and rocky streams, possibly its preferred habitat, and are relatively unaffected by human activity. Let's hope that this shy, reclusive and unique reptile can, with human help, survive for another 70 million years. Thank you for watching everyone. Next week we will be returning to Africa to examine the case of the Nandi bear, equipped with a long and storied history. See you again soon. Cheerio.